It is such a pleasure to be here on such an occasion. Um, we are here to celebrate the contributions of a great man, a friend, a brother, a lover of humankind, a lover of God, and not little God, little G, big G, but God that's associated with Jesus Christ. Uh, he makes no mistake about standing all over this country. He is very passionate about life, and many of you are here today because of his influence in your life. I know this man personally, and when I say it's such a delight to stand before you this evening, because had it not been for Mr. Otis Wayne Bisbee, I promise you I would not be here today from the early beginnings, early, early beginnings of my life as a 14, 15 year old kid attending West End High School with no direction, no sense of real purpose. I knew I wanted to be something. I knew I wanted to be somebody. I really didn't want to be a lawyer, a doctor, or none of that stuff. I knew I didn't want to be full, one, that I wanted to be rich. That's it. I didn't want to be rich. I just wanted to be rich. Um, but I had a mentor in my life that showed me a little something more than just having tangible things in life, but showed me something that was on the inside of me. And I'm sure some of you guys share that same sentiment, and you will share with us tonight. So this momentum, momentous occasion uh, will be filled with joy, will be filled with testimony, will be filled with um, life-giving inspiration. So as we work to inspire you tonight, let us not forget the real reason we are here. And that is because of our good brother. Let's welcome Mr. Otis Wayne this evening. Giver of life. We come first of all thanking you for this day, this opportunity. Oh God, we thank you for allowing us to be here tonight to share in this joyous occasion. We come to you in thankfulness for the many years of service given by our friend and our colleague. We thank you for the loyal contribution he has made. We are grateful for his hard work and dedication. He has been a mentor, a friend, and faithful to the end. We thank you, we lift you up, and we give you all the praise and the honor. And all that agree, said together, Amen. 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 six and nine tells us, let us not grow weary while doing good. And when we think about our honoree tonight, those are some words that we think about when we think about him because he has really been an humble servant. servant. He has served faithful. And it is an honor to be here this evening to uh, welcome you to such an occasion as this to honor and to celebrate the retirement celebration of Mr. Otis Wayne Disney, a friend childhood friend, brother to me, all of those things, and very, very special. So tonight, we welcome you in celebration of our retirement celebration in his honor. We want you to sit back, reflect on the many things that he has played a role in your lives, and we know that as each one of you in this room this evening can tell a story about Otis, because we know that Otis has been a part of each and every one of your lives in here tonight. So we want you to reflect on those things. We're just going to have a wonderful, wonderful time because it's a blessing for us to come together when it is a time to celebrate. Not a time of sorrow or anything of that nature, but a time to celebrate. And we want to celebrate his, his accomplishments and the things that he has done to make a difference in so many lives. So sit back, relax, and enjoy as we celebrate with our educator, our lawyer servant, and most of all, a child of God. And at this time, we have our elementary school teacher, Miss Julia Emma Smith. And this is Otis and many of the others in here. We, she was our elementary school teacher. And so we bring Miss Julia Emma Smith at this time to give some early reflections 
Um, Mr. Otis Wayne with me. Well, good afternoon, and I want to say I'm honored to be part of Otis and his family. And he's always saying that I have been a big influence in his life. Well, I taught him from third grade through eighth grade at Davis School, and he was always a very sincere person at all times, respectful and cooperated with all of the activities because his mother was a very active PTA member. And a lot of things we got at Davis School was through good PTA participants. And whenever we had fundraising, I don't know how Miss Dis you could find out what Renee had and what the others had, but Renee always won, whatever it was. And Otis, when he got to be like seventh or eighth grade, he didn't leave Davis School unless he came to my room to see if I needed anything to go into my car or any other thing that I needed done. And I worked with him at West End uh, School when he was the director of the West End Council. And I have worked with him with other projects since he's been with other parts of the City Board of Education. And I'm proud of him, and he has been a mentor to a lot of young people. And you don't find a young man who is concerned about others, but he is concerned, and he keeps up with me to see if I'm all right, because he wanted to be sure that I had a way here today. He and Jerry both, they are always concerned about me. And you know, that's wonderful to have young people to be concerned about a 92-year-old lady. <laughs>
evening to the honoree, honoree sister and advocate and friend. I want to see just like you. That's what I want to see. <laughs> to our wonderful guests this evening. Isn't this room beautiful? It's just fantastically decorated. And I appreciate all of you coming out this evening for Otis, who is my special friend and my mentor. And my backbone when I needed somebody and shoulder to cry on when things weren't going quite the way I wanted them to and we wanted them to for our children because we're all advocates and activists for the school system. So with that being said, good evening. Good evening. And a special thanks to Counselor London. How are you doing this evening? Okay. I really want to thank Renee, Jerry, Walvet, the whole, the whole committee who really put this together. Looking out at the audience, I see family and friends and church members from 6th Avenue Baptist Church, where I grew up, and uh, Reverend Goodgame and, and Reverend Porter. Uh, my family and community grew up on the south side and uh, the Hawkins. And my mom also was a close friend of uh, Judy Emma Smith, Lenora Carson, Lenora Hawkins, uh, Coradine and W.L. and Cunnell. And we had a very close-knit community. And I think that's what really brought us here this evening, that close-knit community who still remembers what it takes to bring up and raise up a child. And right now we have 25,000 children who really need our help more than ever before. If you look at the news today, we see that children say that they can't breathe, they want more, and we're giving them less. And I wanted to tell all the kids all over the world, especially my daughter in New York who sent me a picture the other day, who says, Mom, I'm the one who's saying Black Lives Matter. She's marching in New York and very proud of her. So I really want to thank all of you for putting this together for Otis, because Otis exemplifies what it means to be an educator. He is that person who never, ever gives up on children, he is there 24-7, whenever you call on him, he's always there. We just had our parent meeting, and you know you were sorely missed, our grandparents <laughs> meeting, they were asking about you. And so it's been a pleasure to know you. Indeed, you're not only a caring person, as uh, Mrs. Smith said, but you're a professional educator in every sense of the word. <clears throat> our student support team will have really, really big shoes to fill without you being there to help steer us in the right direction. So continue to dream big, work hard, and love much and laugh often. Learn something new every day. And always, always at the end of the day, know that you've done the right thing. Not the popular thing, but the right thing. Then even if you have some of your dreams that really don't come true, well, you can still have a wonderful life. In order to move life forward, you have to give something back. And Otis obviously has given something back, and that's why we're all here today. I have witnessed throughout your stellar career, you've done tremendously extraordinary things, and you've done them in spades. Being an educator in an urban school district, it ain't easy, y'all. No, it's not. And I was going to make some remarks for my wonderful husband because he was on route for Germany, in, uh, but he's here now, so he can make those remarks for himself. <laughs> I was hoping that uh, he was coming from the airport right at 7, and Mr. Mays said, is he coming? I said, he's in route. Did I not say that? So thank you so much for coming here to bring greetings, and I do have a proclamation for you that's in the back, and now you can read it for yourself. <laughs> so thanks again for touching the lives and brightening our days with your love for all of our children. We wish you continued health and happiness as you prepare for the next and new exciting chapter of your life. And remember, you can do all things through God that strengthens you. Have a blessed, safe, and fun-filled rest of your life. Continue to be a blessing and be a blessing to others as well. I love you. I love you too, Dr. Oh, I was tired, but the minute I hit the ground, mm -hmm. I knew I had to come here mm -hmm. on this great occasion. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's not everybody that can say the mayor goes out of his way to show up. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about William Bell, I'm talking about the mayor of Birmingham, who is grateful yeah. for the years of service that you have given. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, you have touched so many lives in ways you don't even know. Yeah. Young people, old people, middle-aged people. And for that, we love you. That, that, that's why all these folks are here. They didn't come here just so they can get some free food. <laughs> <laughs> they came to express the love that they have for you. And as this mayor, I want to present this proclamation to you. And I'm not going to read it because I don't have my right glasses on right now. But it's to express to you the deep love that the citizens of Birmingham have for you as a human being, as a child of God, and a servant of man. So thank you, Otis, for all the years of great service. Thank, thank you. you. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Randall Woodman. I have the honor to serve as president of the Birmingham Board of Education. Brother Disney, Renee, I'm humbled to stand um, for you all and your friends and your family to offer an appreciation not only on behalf of the Board of Education but on a personal note as well. If I can, I would like the mayor totally agree. I'm not going to read this entire thing, but I do want to acknowledge a portion of this resolution. Whereas Otis Disney has served the Birmingham City School System with great distinction by giving of his time, energy, and expertise to the staff and students of Birmingham City Schools. Whereas Mr. Disney's wisdom, integrity, unyielding determination, and distinguished service stand as a trademark of his devotion to the needs of our students and staff in Birmingham City Schools, forging extensive relationships between his colleagues and contemporaries. Now, be it resolved that the Birmingham Board of Education, along with the superintendent, hereby express our appreciation. To Mr. Otis Wayne Disney for his exemplary service, and we express our sincere wishes for a happy retirement. <laughs> the only thing cooler than being, being or having an opportunity to serve on the Board of Education has been the BT. We met 10 years ago when I moved back home. And I had a chance to work with Renee. And in knowing her brother, what he has provided for Birmingham, and what he's personally provided for me, I'm actually at a loss for work. But on a personal note, Wish you not only after retirement, but best wishes in everything you do. I have a special place in my not only in my mind but in my heart for you. And I'm mentioning my mind and heart because when I think about educators, I'm sitting at the table having a conversation with my mom, my stepmom, my sister, who are all educators. We talk about how a lot of educators they want to stimulate children's minds. They want to activate this knowledge base and get children to learn. And all of that is important. But when we find a, a person like Brother Disney who actually activates that same child's heart to believe in themselves, courage, the intangible of leadership, providing direction, that's a special education. You've done that for me. You've done that for me in the last 10 years. I personally say thank you.
present him with something. And Mama said, go ahead and you write it. It says, present it to Otis Wayne Bishop. We express our sincere gratitude to a visionary. I'm going to stop right there. On one of these, it says, most likely to succeed. He was a visionary in my life and many of yours. How when he recruited me for Morehouse to come and uh, be a camp counselor, we could have gone to Wall Street, Knoxville College, we could have been in California, Atlanta, and this man influenced us to, to make a commitment to come back home, right. to help these children and motivate them and let them see some folks who had come through with but survived. And, and Mr. Disney used to tell us one thing. He said, I'm not going to teach you a whole lot of stuff about, about kids and how to uh, be good mentors. He said, there's one test that uh, you have with children. He said, after you've been around these kids for a long period of time and they've observed you and watched you, he said, those kids, when they see you, baby, and they nay and you out at the Galleria and Brookwood and, and the railroad park, he said, they either gonna run to you, right, 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 run, run. or run away, from you. And this man's legacy is the same legacy that Christ tried to teach the disciples. Not only because you saw potential, not only because you pushed so many of us. And I want those of us that have been under his tutelage for years to stand right where you are. And I want you to see the fruit of your labor. The labor hadn't been in vain. And because of him and because of so many of you, that it's not over. And we understand that Mr. Gardner and Trayvon and, and all of those others, but there are yet those that are pulling their pants up and they're not pumping holes in their ears, they're pumping knowledge in their head. They're not trying to show their body, but they're showing off their mind. We celebrate you. may not be a millionaire. I don't know how much money he's got. <laughs> but I can tell you what, he put a lot of us on a million dollar pathway. A great servant, a great leader, a godly man and probably the greatest motivator I've seen and experienced in my lifetime. Job well done. Hold his name this year. Tell me what I want to hear and tell me what I need to hear. But he gives it to me in a way that's just enough for me to understand and take in. Um, my uncle, he's such an amazing person that even that doesn't even begin to even describe him. From the beginning, he was always there. And he taught me um, that there's a better way to make it. Like, when I was coming up, we didn't have a lot of famous black role models. We didn't have Barack Obama. We didn't have Nobody really, we had rappers and entertainers, but he told me that that was a better way, a more meaningful way to make it. And, um, and he told me not to, uh, not to ever back down for what you believe in. And he also taught me that um, service is the best route. Like, serve people because you can give people money, but that doesn't matter. That's not, it's not something that's really gonna last with people, but they're always gonna remember like <coughs> how you really help them, like what you said to them, um, just how you motivate them, just like all these people around here. <laughs>